be viewing um, making an understanding on the data that is coming in into our database on geographics and how we use a map using that particular data uh, we'll be uh, following on we'll be importing our project wells logs and land data along with our 2d and 3d segway uh, we will be um, focusing on the practices for building a seismic uh, interpretation. That's a basic seismic interpretation. We're working on the displaying of the maps and the 2D seismic sections, along with uh, MISTI analysis and seismic line balance, creating the synthetics and obviously going for the seismic. Uh, we'll be interpreting our 2D seismic and mapping our seismic horizon time depth and tributes and at the end of the demonstration we'll be going to create a 2d seismic base map layer in order to this mapping tool which is geoatlas now let's uh, get on to the demonstration okay so whenever you launch your graphics so this is the main uh, project explorer window um, the one highlighted is my active project. So uh, we have various import options uh, available, uh, import and export formats. Uh, we majorly export all major uh, formats. So uh, first of all, uh, to carry on with the work, uh, focusing on getting the well data along with our log curves and so to get the well data into geographics, we have several options. Uh, for uh, for now, we'll be choosing going with ASCII 2 import. Along with ASCII 2, we can also have the options of spreadsheet. That's an Excel spreadsheet where you can get your data into geographics by using a normal uh, Excel spreadsheet. So going on, import the ASCII 2 to get our well data into geographics. So we'll browse the file. I'm a little head open. So while loading the file, it asks you to overwrite options, uh, which is to preserve all, overwrite all, or we can define the settings uh, to restrict any uh, zones or any location to which we do not want the data to be imported. So I'll go with the default options for now. Okay. This is the uh, import map, uh, which, if uh, which depending on your data uh, location, uh, you can change the system. Uh, or the, for now, I'm going with the North American datum of 1927. So, so I hit finish. So the data shall be imported in our well base. That's a library structure format of well base. So I'll quickly launch well base to introduce you. So this is a well base in which um, our wells, which we imported, that's well one, two, and three are in system. Uh, we can view the wells, the number of the formations that were imported during the import. Uh, then we have the velocities identified to well number one. Okay. Moving on from here, we uh, go on and import our lock curve data. So for the lock curve data, I have the LBS files available with me. So uh, while loading the multi-well import, it asks us again three options, which is automatic mode, run using default import options below. You can select import options by yourself, or you can manually stop and ask whenever uh, you want to restrict any particular information during the well import process. So once uh, the lock curve data and the well data is imported, so uh, we have uh, uh, the mapping tool, which is GeoAtlas with us. So we'll launch GeoAtlas to create the layer. So this is uh, the well uh, layer that we have imported in, in geographics software in our project. So we'll go on and import. Uh, GeoAtlas basically gives us different import and export options, and we are um, uh, supports ISRI RJ 10.1 and 10.2 uh, current versions as well. So for now, I'll go with ISRI shapefile import. So with the ISRI shapefile import, I'm going on with the lines. The ISRI shapefile import. 
town. I'll just name it Township Red. Sorry, I'm just gonna name it. Okay. Okay, so because it's already been created, so we'll hit next and uh, share file port would be displayed on uh, like this. So once we have uh, our uh, in GeoAtlas, so it's time to uh, go on with the seismic basic interpretation workflow. So this is the size vision um, uh, tab, uh, which is our 2D and 3D seismic interpretation tool. So um, once you open the tab, it will give you an options of load seismic. So load 2D will go on with the loading of our 2D data initially. So we'll select the or seg by to be loaded. In this, there are multiple options for the user to select uh, number of sample traces, sample interval, uh, units you can choose between meter, feet, and microseconds. And you can uh, obviously uh, go with the sample interval divisor as well. For now, I'm going with the data domain as time. Hit next. So usually, uh, with all the major vendor uh, file imports, we have the uh, dumper um, uh, files available, which are giving us our CMPs, uh, short and X and Y coordinates. So uh, we'll find the short points. and then X and Y's. Okay, uh, the next step in the visit uh, for the is uh, uh, title information. So we're gonna create a lane, uh, create line name and version table uh, from the import that we have uh, just written. And we can obviously set the uh, coordinate system again, uh, depending on the location of the data. So I'm going with the, uh, the North American data for my data set. So you can select your output directory from here and we can hit. So after loading the data, uh, similarly, we can go for uh, loading of the 3D data as well, which is quite it's a very simple workflow. So we'll give the data set name uh, 3D webinar uh, original location is cool. Actually, import our segway file. hit next. Again, uh, you have your selection of data domains, so we'll going with the time. Uh, so I'll hit next. Line number is nine, seven, four, seventy three, four, seven, four. Next. Uh, visit box. Uh, and step number four, uh, go with the grid information. There's a scan tool available, which will scan our inlines and cross line. Uh, we can go over data. So for this interpretation, I'm setting up the datum as uh, 500 meters. This is a review of your SegWi file, uh, and we can review that if it's been correctly displayed. Uh, and then after hitting node and by hitting the output file name, we can drive the file name anywhere, maybe on the desktop. And we can hit load. So in already loaded these uh, files. Okay, so once uh, our well data is uh, in the project along with our log curves and uh, uh, seismic 2D and 3D, so it's time to create the new interpretation. So I'll create the new interpretation as uh, seismic interpretation. So it's an optional, then the 
a domain and time. So I'll hit OK. So once we create, it's a mashup um, uh, display that you'll see, uh, which will indicate that there are no seismic traces attached to the interpretation as of now. So because we'll be working with horizons uh, for, for this, we'll be working with false. So I just go on and uh, now in size vision, we have a big parameters um, display options on your left side. Uh, which is very uh, easy and quick for any interpreter to use it uh, from here instead of COVID, just going to managers or anything. So now uh, it's time to go for the uh, seismic traces into the interpretation. So we'll go to the interpretation manager, we'll add the programs. And We'll hit the lines. All right, thanks. From uh, this dialog box, uh, you can go on and uh, check your coordinate systems if you want to change the coordinate system. Uh, so it and it's uh, as well. I'll hit finish to add the lines. And similarly for the um, program, I'm gonna add the lines for the second program as well. With the help of my control key, so I'll select, next and finish, okay. So once I have uh, uh, got interpretation, as you can see in the main map view, so I'll set the datum, uh, elevation as 500 as predefined, and for Second group, I'll set the data elevations 500 as well. All right, so uh, we have our 2D seismic traces attached to the interpretation now. Um, then we can go on and uh, from the layers, the layers that we have uh, that we created uh, using GeoAtlas earlier. So we can select that layer from GeoAtlas, uh, this township range grade for the pointers. We can select that layer and attach it. Uh, seismic interpretation. <clears throat> okay, so once I've attached my layer uh, along with these seismic traces into the interpretation, so uh, we go, go on and uh, add those informations uh, as well. So these are all, all of these we have in our project during the import option. So I'll select all and hit next. As there are no faults, uh, we will be playing with no faults. So uh, let's just hit finish. Okay, so as you can see, um, we have tied our wells along with our seismic traces in uh, We can, it's time to Get the horizon, build the horizons, we go to formations, formation list, and there's a list of the formations that are available in our uh, project. So we'll pick up the and we'll create the horizons for VAP GRP, uh, Beaver Hill Lake, and for Elk Point as well. So now uh, if you can just notice, once I was creating the horizons, it is automatically being populated in my horizon panel list. Okay, now to start with, uh, we are going to uh, get some interpretation settings and change the interpretation settings according to our project needs. So we'll be giving the interpretation name as uh, 2D seismic inter interpretation. And uh, in the description box, I'll just write down expression of carbonate reefs. Okay. The display units, uh, I'll be displaying them in feet, and we can write down our datum elevation. It's 500 and 
right so okay so now once i've uh, given it so we go to the seismic view and we can adjust the uh, scaling options from here so uh, for this particular th um, uh, trace display so i have my color traces on and interpolate and the trace deflection is 300 so I'll go with the defaults and the trace scale, you can see there are three options available, trace to trace, uh, interpretation constant, and the survey constant. Trace to trace, this option basically scales the color for each based on highest amplitude for each uh, inline. And the interpretation constant, it uh, rescales amplitudes based on range of amplitude in, uh, in the interpretation. And the this survey constant scales amplitude based on large amplitudes on open uh, open sections. So uh, we're going with uh, trace to trace, in which will be uh, uh, trace will be based on the highest amplitude. Change the line intersection display as uh, carrot and vertical. So on the well, this will uh, go with the well number from here and hit OK. So since I've hit apply it, uh, we can also right click and go to the map display properties. And the map display properties, I go to seismic uh, 2D to show my short points. And under the wells, I'll uh, well number for my well number three. Okay. So uh, once I've done then, so it's now uh, time to define our 2D seismic section. So I'll open a um, seismic line by clicking on this green button from here. And we'll open a line LBT201. Now in this particular line, as you can notice, uh, this, is, this is a well bore, and my formation tops are, are displayed along with the well bore as well. So I'll open another line, uh, MHT101, and I display both of these lines uh, parallel to each other. Okay, now if you can just notice, um, uh, both of uh, these uh, sections are displayed um, parallel to each other and you can notice the shift uh, between the formations uh, from here. Uh, a basic a quick correlation of this type must be adjusted to each other with respect to a static and phase shift before uh, uh, we can interpret them. So uh, in the next step, We'll be adjusting their starting and phase shift uh, by creating a composite of uh, between both of these two lines. So I'll close this and we'll go on and create the composite. Go to seismic and open a composite window. This is a composite uh, line between uh, for for. Uh, Go to display, and we'll adjust the uh, scroll bar and auto scroll as well. <clears throat> and we're gonna color the horizons uh, to make them. that we can visualize them. I'm going to give them the uh, highlighter colors for all of these three horizons that we have created. Uh, maybe I'll go with green, this one, okay. So as you can see, uh, these three horizons are marked. So I'll go on and save 
with this seismic section and maybe name as uh, 2D composite line. I'm going to symbol it as A. Please also note that um, during our well import earlier, uh, wells with sonic intensity were imported into the project earlier, and now they tie the seismic via synthetic will determine which seismic line is best reference line for the seismic line balance, uh, so that we can balance up these. So you can go to wells. I'll show you the well logs. So if you, you can see the well logs uh, between well number one and well number two, Rob and DT uh, are the common well logs between one uh, number, uh, well number one and well number three. So these uh, shall be used to calculate our synthetics for both of these wells. You can obviously go on and open uh, previously saved predefined uh, composite window again. So I'll just go on and open it again. And we can create the sync view uh, for well number three. This will allow us to better uh, understand and interpret our uh, seismic reference line. So if you can just see on the uh, synthetic seismogram, um, oh, sorry, on the synthetic window, uh, that this marker right now, right above to our VAP horizon, uh, our sonic log. Uh, this represents the kick, uh, may I say, uh, and it, this represents the transition of cluster rocks above the VAP to carbonate rocks, or the change from slower velocities to the uh, uh, faster velocities. And uh, let's just, may I change the display, and I'll change the gain to nine, this, just to show them, uh, and if I uh, go on and uh, show you the main map view, so in this main map view, you will see that the well number three is uh, the um, is at the junction of the two line segments, making up the uh, composite line, and is uh, quite near to the junction as well. So coming back to the sync view. So you can see that uh, in the seismic traces, in the seismic traces panel box, the area around uh, VAP, which is around this, uh, by default, SyncView displays 25 traces uh, display around the trace closest to the well. Uh, the closest trace to the well is indicated by a plus sign from here. So we can say that uh, the top, uh, at the top of the seismic, so we can say that in the middle of the seismic trace pane, uh, we have uh, both five traces on the left side of the seismic traces are of MHT 101 uh, line, and the right side are from LBT 201 as well. So, uh, and we can obviously notice the shift between the two lines from here. So in this event, uh, we can well say that the line that needs to be balanced is MHT101. So we'll be taking this line as our reference line to balance the equation. So we'll close the sync view, return to our composite line. <clears throat> and from the tools option, uh, we'll go to seismic line balance. So from the seismic line balance, there's a constraint method in which we'll uh, pick up our reference line. So as per our uh, earlier uh, interpretation, we the reference line is D101. So I'll pick up that line, include, if you can see that the MHD101, which uh, we uh, referred as the reference line, it's highlighted. So we'll build up, build up the list. And for the time, we'll put that as 500 and one, two, two zero as the maximum time. So we'll compute the miss ties for now. So once the miss ties have been computed, we'll compute the shift. 
you can see from the edit shifts, uh, all of the time gain and the phase has been calculated for all of the lines except our reference line, which is displays at 0, 0.0 for time gain and phase. So once we have computed a shift, so it's uh, time to process the lines. So we'll process the lines uh, by unchecking our reference line and we'll display as, as balanced. And the version is balanced too. MHT 101. Do not forget to uh, check on the set as active version in order to see the results. Okay, so, so it's done. Uh, we'll go to the map view and create a composite again. Show the. So once we open the composite window, uh, Please note that there is a continuous horizon now. Uh, continuous horizon now between uh, both of these well number one and well number three. Um, also notice that the VAP GRP horizon is pointing towards the negative red event uh, from here uh, instead of the positive black event. So this uh, we'll be adjusting uh, during our uh, uh, adjustments in the next workflow uh, by using the sync view again. So I'll close this composite line. Now to adjust the shift, I'll uh, open the MHD101 seismic well ties. So to make it a bit clear. Open the sync view. Going for the seismic well ties, so I'm gonna change the display and make nine uh, uh, tracation. And for this, I'll go with uh, three, and just to change the color, so so that we can. I can change the time scale, uh, so I'm putting the time scale as 15 centimeters. So once I've adjusted the displays and the time scales, so while clicking on the right click, time shift mode. So on the synthetic amplitude window, uh, I'll just left click from a mouse with the time shift mode and the right click uh, on, on the seismic traces on the event, which is right around 0 0.52 seconds. So once I do that, so uh, it will automatically align. Also, we have a time stretch mode uh, in sync that is available within size vision. So by using the time stretch mode, I'll go on and so you can see the dashed lines uh, right through the seismic traces. So to adjust this, uh, maybe I'll just select the event somewhere around, around, around this event and the corresponding event at uh, 858. So again, we're gonna stretch it. Right next to our uh, Mosaka formation, which is over there. So we'll stretch it again. And uh, somewhere around this major event, and this. So once we have uh, uh, done with the uh, seismic well ties, we can update our velocity synthetic using this pattern over here. So in the interest of time, I've already, already uh, uh, updated the synthetic into uh, into my project as 35 as synthetic. So I'll just close this. Similarly, we can go with uh, line MHT. One zero two, and by creating the sync view, we can perform the same functions on this. So, in the interest of time, I've already performed these uh, steps. 
once we go to our well list, uh, let me turn on the velocity. So you can see the uh, is now as set as active. And for well number three, synthetic is set as active as well. So now once I've uh, um, I've picked up my horizons, so now if you can see on my MH101 and just uh, focus on the web uh, horizon, so now it's pointing towards the uh, black positive uh, line. So I'll close this and I can go to the interpretation settings. Under the lock of display now I can hang my synthetics uh, as well. So synthetics, I'll create it the right and uh, maybe 300. The number of traces as three. On the right, uh, the curve name T. So I'll hit OK. And I can also change the display radius as well. So I'll make the display radius as 200 meters. So we have calculated our uh, velocities uh, for well number three and well number one. So we can create the uh, velocity for well number two as well. So to use that, we can uh, we will we'll do that manually to tie formations tops to the seismic horizons in well number two. So to do that, uh, LBT 201. And I'll display my synthetic as well. So now the synthetic is hanging uh, right next to my well board for better interpretation results as well. So I'll right click on it and go with user defined velocities. So with user defined velocity for VAP, I'll choose somewhere around 512. Uh, for Beverly, I'll go with the right marker. And similarly, I can go for the third horizon, the calc point. Around this, so I can save that and set as an active version under user defined equation. So I open the wells against two RC service. So you can see this is uh, an activated user defined equations under well number two. Now, once we have uh, uh, done with the seismic well ties uh, and the line balancing as well, it's time to pick the horizons. So before I pick the horizons, uh, I'll just color them. Uh, we can change the colors of the horizons from, so just for the better marking, uh, maybe this, okay. And uh, for the event detection, uh, for Beverly Hill, I'll go with uh, zero plus minus, and for L point, I'll go with rough, and for I'll go with peak. So once we have made this uh, so I go on MST101, and I'll start on and pick the horizons. So to pick up the horizons, just uh, click on the um, horizon name on our horizon panel and you can pick up the horizon. Also change the uh, the weight on our uh, seismic interpretation with the help of a short key Q from your keyboard and to revert back you can use W from your keyboard as well. So I'll just click B and pick up the second horizon. And for elk, we'll pick up the horizon from here. Likewise, uh, we can go on and interpret our 
other lines. So for MHD103, we can pick up the horizons by uh, with the help of the uh, horizon markers, uh, which you can see, and you can change the Um, horizon intersection marker size um, to any number, uh, maybe 30, any number would you like. So you can see the weight of this is increased. So I'll go on and pick up the horizons. Uh, so if I'll get the continuous horizons with the help of the markers. And similarly for elk. Likewise, we can go on and pick up the horizons for the other two lines, so I'll be quick in this spot. You can go on and pick up the horizons from my health point as well. And for the last line as well. We also have an option of uh, 2D auto picking and 3D auto picking uh, within size vision. So, but uh, just to make it as a simpler workflows, uh, so I'm just going with the manual pickings. All right, so once uh, we are done with the horizon picking, um, we also have an option of uh, horizon flattening. So I'll adjust the seismic display. And we're gonna flatten this horizon to half point. And I'll hit apply. You can see this uh, horizon is flattened to half point now. And uh, this F sign under the elk is uh, uh, showing us that this horizon is flattened. Now once we have uh, done with our seed picking and the horizon picking, so um, we uh, mapping over for the mapping on time, depth, and attributes. So to do, to do that, we'll first of all create a mapping grid polygon. So I'll create the polygon with the help of uh, left clicks from a mouse. So while creating a mapping polygon, uh, you have the options of smaller grading features, which is the fastest execution, and it is the recommended one, uh, based on the grid size and based on the data distribution. So by checking on the defaults, and we can choose from the minimum curvature or the inverse distance for the standard methods. So by checking on the defaults, I'll just create the polygons. So as I've created the polygon, so on the left of my horizon left, so by right clicking on the time, I'll go with and convert this uh, time into velocities and then into depth. So I'll create the velocities against uh, each horizon. So, sorry, create, creating the times, beg your pardon. Okay, so once we have created the time, so we'll choose the show velocity service, okay? And from the interpretation settings, uh, I can sh choose the data source as my velocity surveys. So there are three options uh, in our data source, so seismic horizons, well formations and tops. The other one is uh, velocity surveys, uh, and the other is we not the KZ. So uh, we can choose these options uh, as our data source while uh, choosing the, the velocity surveys. Uh, 
V0 plus KZ method uh, basically extrapolates the velocity up and down uh, dip from wells with velocity control to better manage the velocity field in highly dipping areas. So um, the data, whatever, what I have, so I'll go with the velocity surveys for now. <clears throat> So once I've uh, set my data as velocity survey, so I'll just go on and double click on it and create velocity. Likewise, I'm gonna do repeat the same step for the other horizons as well. So now uh, once I have my uh, velocities created, <clears throat> So I can now convert them into depth. Similarly for this, I can get into depth and for elk, I can get it into depth. So now I have uh, my uh, depth converted in it, so I can go on and uh, show the attributes. Um, so there are, uh, within size vision, we have the attribute and surface calculator list in which we can show our uh, attributes and there's uh, approximately uh, 20 attributes available uh, along with the curvature and geometric attributes within uh, size vision. So I'll open it. So we'll select the surveys and we'll hit calculate. Okay. So once uh, so once we have um, uh, created our depth seismic and we are hanging our uh, attributes, so uh, the last step of today's uh, webinar would be to uh, we can for our mapping uh, purpose and we can use this the depth seismic lay with our geology as well for as in like for the seismic backdrop so we can create a 2d uh, seismic layer so just to entertain your questions as well uh, I've already created the layer uh, this is a 2d uh, base map layer and this is the final output uh, which is displayed in GeoAtlas uh, this workflow so this makes uh, to an end of our, our